Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said he never planned to honor the 2014-2015 Minsk agreements to create peace between Russia, he said in a recent interview with a German magazine. And while he never planned to honor the agreements, he was elected on the promise of ending the Donbas war. In the interview, Zelensky also reportedly accused the West of being insufficiently supportive of Ukraine, despite the billions of dollars the U.S. has sent in aid before the war began last year and ever since. President Joe Biden will be traveling to Poland this month to rally allies one year after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The White House announced this on Friday. The visit, which is scheduled for February 20th to the 22nd, comes as polling in the U.S. and abroad suggests waning support for maintaining the costly military and economic assistance for Ukraine, AP News writes. Whew, okay, so— No amount of support is enough. Yeah, I mean, the, the layers of this are really interesting. So— Zelensky is essentially being elected to bring peace with Russia and over these disputed territories. The Minsk uh, agreements, the Minsk Accords were intended to do that by withdrawing heavy uh, artillery, having an immediate ceasefire, allowing some self-determination in the Donbass region, which some argue was, in fact, the sticking point and what drove folks to not want to actually, the Ukrainians or Zelensky, to not want to actually agree to this. The concerns being that if there was this degree of self-determination, it would affect national politics in a way that was too sympathetic to Russian influence as opposed to influence of the, of the West. Um, so having that kind of admission that he had no intended to, intention of ever following through with those peace agreements compo compounded with the complaints about not giving, getting enough Western support when it's gotten more Western support than most countries suffering various kinds of tragedies could even hope to get. Mm -hmm. it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting back-to-back -back story sandwich. He, he has gotten, he has the total support of the Biden administration. He has the total support of of, congr of Republican congressional leadership, at least up until recently, with the, maybe with the election of a new speaker, that's changed. But Mitch McConnell has said his highest priority is arming the Ukrainian defense. He's gotten everything without question. And uh, I, look, I think he's been radicalized by this experience. Clearly, his country is being invaded. Uh, he's had an ideological change of heart, perhaps. <laughs> it seems to many of us that it would just be wise to have self-determination in the Donbas region and, the, and, and, and end to hostilities, whichever way they go, Russia has to abide by that. You know, they pull the troops out, there's self-determination, there's peace, and there's an agreement that the, the rest of Ukraine will be protected in the, in the event of an, of an actual invasion. It seems like something, again, right along the lines of what Elon Musk articulated, and, and, and he's not alone in that. We've articulated that. Yeah. So many people have said, let's have that be the agreement. But what you hear from U.S. State Department officials is that, no, this is, we're in it for the long haul with the eventual goal of having the Putin regime collapse, yeah. which is a fantasy, or, or at least a very long-term, like an extremely long-term goal. Yeah, and, and whatever you think, I mean, what, however you want to credit Putin's statements or take them at face value, I completely appreciate it if you don't want to. But at the time, you know, around the time of the invasion, he was saying things like, you know, Minsk was the reason that there was this ongoing conflict or the failure to actually follow through with Minsk. He said, quote, we all endured, endured, and endured and hoped for some kind of peace agreement, but now it turns out we were simply fooled, he told reporters, I think, back in 2022. So, you know, just strategically, kind of rhetorically, you're putting him in a position of saying that I was the one that was willing to come to the table when Zelensky is fully saying I was not negotiating in good faith. I don't know that that's a posture that the West wants to be taking on. On top of which, this is all coming after we've had a news cycle about the Seymour Hersh story, about America blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. I mean, no wonder that public opinion is turning on mm -hmm. this. Well, former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson published an op-ed in The Washington Post a few weeks ago arguing that Russian President Vladimir Putin has paved the way for Ukrainian membership in NATO as Russia has shaped itself as the aggressor and Ukraine as the victim. Johnson also argues that if we had, quote, been brave and consistent enough to bring Ukraine into to NATO, then this utter catastrophe would have been averted. He writes that this war should be finished as quickly as possible, and we should begin the process of admitting Ukraine to NATO now. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of confusion there, though, because uh, the perception that we might admit NATO or admit Ukraine to NATO rather was one of Russia's stated. Mm -hmm. Dis quarrels mm -hmm. with what was going on. They they said like they were clear about that. We mm -hmm. don't like this. We d we don't like you dangling NATO as a possibility for them. That is a reason for the invasion. Yep. So to say that 
we should have, like, like exactly what he's discussing, in fact, that, that environment where it's being openly discussed that maybe we should have them be part of NATO, was itself a substantial contributor to the war. Yes, now that they have been, I agree that Russia is the aggressor, they have been invaded, and part of the peaceful resolution to this conflict might very well be that the non-contested part of Ukraine has to have some agreement that it's going to be protected if Russia re doesn't follow through on whatever the commitment is in the peace deal. Yes, I understand that now, because of the situation we're in now, but we, our actions contributed to that situation with the underlying diplomacy he is there advocating. It's completely uh, took us backward, yeah. as, they, <laughs> as they say. I, 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 I don't... I, I don't understand why someone would say things. I mean, look, I do understand why someone would say things like this. I do think there's an argument that many people who have been shielded from the precipitating events that caused this, that led to this conflict, I should say, because nobody forced Russia to Ukraine, uh, Russia to invade Ukraine, obviously, but the precipitating events that could have played out differently, that could have avoided this crisis, have largely been obscured from the public discourse, such that so many Americans believe that even pointing to the inclusion of Ukraine and NATO as a driving, instigating moment for Russia, think of that as a Putin talking point and you're a propagandist and an RT watcher and all of these things, if you even say those kinds of things out loud. So in that kind of immediate climate, I think there are a lot of people who can hear Boris Johnson make an outrageous claim, like if we had put Ukraine and NATO harder, <laughs> we would have avoided the conflict. Yeah. Um, that sounds in some ways credible to the, the casual listener, but it does what says more about what Boris Johnson's agenda is than anything um, about what the actual facts are on the ground. And it does seem, I mean, we cover the story of Boris Johnson, ironically enough, apparently being engaged in uh, these peace, peace talks last spring and the, these Western allies, Johnson and Biden together, scuttling those kind of negotiations. We had a former Israeli prime minister making those statements in, in, a, in a clip that we covered last week, apparently got a lot of pressure and blowback for saying what many believe and understood to be true, which is that the West didn't want to come to the negotiating table at that time when the conflict first emerged. And now we have Bor Boris Johnson doubling down on this bizarre NATO expansion agenda that who benefits who exactly? Mm -hmm. Certainly doesn't seem to be uh, the Ukrainian people who are, of course, caught in the middle of all of this. So. Yeah. Well, we'll continue to cover that, and we'll be back with more Rising right after these messages. Stay tuned.